you heard this artificial intelligence before. Then, thanks to Dr. Srinivas Murthy, Dr. Maheshwari, Dr. Panda for accommodating me. Can you, thank you. We'll be talking on salvaging the kidney. How do I do it? And like sure. No, you will do it. During COVID season, it's going to be career time. During COVID season, many people lost their smell. So badly somebody was looking, why Hamari Nak Kaha Chali? So, That's the rationality, what we have learned with IIT's people teaching us about the COVID, IIT Kanpur, IIT Kharagpur, as if we have become only licensed medical prescription writers. And that's why we have lost many opportunity to innovate in medicine and things are going beyond clinician, going to the diagnostic houses. So we'll be talking on how to salvage the kidney and we could start at the primary prevention where we would, and, and Dr. Uh, Makar would remember that Yusuf Salim about 20, 25 years back gave the concept of putting four pill in one capsule the RAS inhibitor, the statin, antihypertensive together with aspirin, hoping that even the individual at a very high risk would take this and would get prevention from the hypertension, thereby the PKP. Then we could look at the some of the conditions like those which are the aflatoxins, the aminoglycosides, the interstitial nephrosis which we complement the PKD. Then we could look at the secondary prevention and we all have learned now diabetes, hypertension, that the two diseases which we require to understand and from there we move onward. Then looking at the proteinuria, looking at the dysglycemia, and then looking at the tertiary prevention. I'll take this slide, Dr. Mani, whom we respect more than any professor of medicine. He never had been to any academic institution, but uh, he is now 90 plus, very, renowned revered nephrologist to all of us and he published this article 25 years back wrote in kidney international which is a very high impact journal like uh, new england journal of medicine or for that purpose lancet i mean such a high impact study and look at the blue uh, yellow line with the simple treatment of adult pain acid drex reserving we all wrote dozen of prescription Dr. Makar must have written during his residency. We wrote a lot during our time. And downhill, glybenclamide, very potent anti-glycemic drug. You take this morning, 500 sugar will be half by the next, within two days. He could reduce the incidence of chronic kidney disease significantly by 6,000 in population, not hospital basis, sir. not tertiary care referral. And, and you can understand the importance. And therefore, the one of the important, and this came to only six pence per individual at the total expenditure. 25 years back, that time gliptin was not there. Gliflozines were not there. We do not have the costly GLPRA at that time present. And still the incidence of chronic kidney disease could be reduced. HbA1c was brought down 70%. Look at the other this. This particular incident, that seventy percent people could get HbA1c less than seven percent. So therefore, to prevent the salvage kidney, we have to look at the glomerulonephritis, the primary condition, looking at the prevention, which is possible, looking at the immune-mediated diseases, immune complex disease, stop infection, take care of the simple physical presence like headache, blood pressure, facial, periorbital edema, letharginess, low-grade fever, weight. Therefore, one can halt at the level of acute glomerulonephritis, acute kidney injury, all prevention. Can also look at the preventing the progression from acute to chronic glomerulonephritis. Serum creatinine may not be true estimate. Look at the young boy, serum creatinine could be 1.2. 
a middle aged man 48 50 60 it could be again 1.2 and 80 year old lady 1.2 but look at the egfr it could be anything from 98 to 49 almost is stage 3 and therefore egfr remains the prime and most important parameter at this stage one looking at the action plan do diagnosis treatment following the progression is stage two estimating the progression is stage three evaluating the treating the complication and then looking at the renal replacement therapy option after stage five one in three approximately adults with the diabetes and one in five adults with high blood pressure may have chronic kidney disease and therefore you have to estimate the both egfr the proteinuria and drugs have to be appropriately chosen for them if proteinuria would be reduced on you i'm starting from very simple i'm starting from the diet first now and if you reduce the dietic intake of the protein from 1.02 gram per kg per day to 0.89 one can reduce the ckd incidence 90 percent on ACE inhibitor no difference on albuminuria and independent risk factor so there could be significant reduction of ckd in the terms of four to five year follow-up when we reduce the protein intake from 0.84 to 0.4, I'll come in a moment to exactly what it is. Then you reduce the reduction of EGFR from 5 ml to 1 ml. If it is 1 ml drop per year, and you strictly adhere to the reduction in the protein diet, that is 0.4 gram per kg body weight, then you attain the 90 percentile advantage of 5 ml. This is the protection what you get at the end of the one year. If EGFR is more than 60, you remain on the normal diet, protein diet. If it is less than 60, then the start protein restriction right from there. If it is less than 30, low protein diet. The moment patient goes to hemodialysis and transplant program, you can liberalize protein intake. Look at the LO at the bottom, it is 0.4 gram per body weight. So the normal RDA and difference between the patient on the pre prevention, you can start 0.8 gram and you can reduce it to 0.6 gram. Salt can be 2.3 to 1.3. Potassium 3.5 to 2. Phosphorus should be, and, and it's the fish. Fish contain very high phosphorus. If it's the sea fishes, and you have to be very, very cautious of it and then look at the fat and the cholesterol. We are, I'll show you some of the evidences for this statin. Therefore, to combine the two, the keto analog diet, reduction in the protein, reduction in the salt intake, high potassium, less phosphorus, would improve on the bone mineralization, improve on the insulin resistance of the skeletal muscle tissue, take care of the sarcopenia, one of the very important factor in the type 2 diabetes making insulin resistance very strong. So sarcopenia would be reduced, as well as the catabolism, erythropoietin sensitivity uh, improve, insulin sensitivity uh, improve at the adipose site, and also CKD pro progression would be reduced. This is the keto analog diet on chronic kidney disease, which is a meta analysis 2019 publication. Look at the bottom. When you change the diet pattern and have keto analog, then EGFR improves tremendously, and the patient with on the CKD MBD in patient with EGF less than 18 ml per minute can improve from this is the statin and the pleiotropic effect I was talking about uh, before would decrease the monocyte macrophage infiltration very important histological changes into the renal parenchyma decrease mesangial proliferation responsible for the sclerosis decrease accumulation of extracellular matrix and also take care of the enos and therefore these effects could lead to improvement in the progression of kidney disease which is statin jupiter study had taught us at one year egfr had declined by 6.5 to 7 so the difference of 0.5 ml per year per minute those patients who took rosewa statin then the placebo for a stat was 0.34 to 0.4 ml so close to 0.7 ml per minute per year, and the PRAVA statin we do not use very much, but it has a tremendous potential, 8% improvement. Atorovastatin stands better than the placebo, and this is the slide where Atorovastatin 
uh, 80 milligrams have an advantage in reducing uh, in decreasing the progression of the pgfr and in pgfr would improve this is the slide over the 1994 to 2015 the MDRD trial, which was primarily diet-based study in the patient who has the EGFR between significant reduction, 13 to 65 ml, look at the GFR value, and a still reduction of the blood pressure, systolic blood pressure from 107 to 92 milligram could protect the kidney. Renin, which was primarily the Ramipril-based study, did not have any change on the progression. So. This study shows that angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor would retard proteinuria, but would not retard the progression of chronic kidney disease. A spin, which was a primarily blood pressure trial, have showed reduction between 140 to 120. Even the patient with EGFR of 20 ml, if you control strictly blood pressure, they would decrease the incidence of the chronic CBD and death from the renal failure. As which amlodipine was used as antihypertensive, when you significantly de decrease the blood pressure, even patient with EGFR between 20 to 65 ml per minute, you could improve upon the total progression and deterioration of the renal function and occurred, did not improve on the total cardiovascular, but improve on the. If you look at the Simple control of blood pressure, even amlodipine, any, any antihypertensive for that purpose, if it is controlled, that would prevent the decrease of the EGFR. And, and this could start from 11.5 on the my right side up to the bottom at 1.3. All patients would decrease, but when the patient is controlled with the blood pressure, then there is less deterioration of the renal function. You might need two, three, four, five drugs, nephrologist to some, some five, six drugs, central blocker, alpha blocker, beta blocker. Don't criticize the prescription. Otherwise, even systolic blood pressure doesn't pass down because there's severe glomerular sclerosis. Total architecture is lost. So all autoregulation fail. And therefore, what we have to decide is how many drugs can control the blood pressure. Blood pressure has to be brought down anyway, up to 128 to 138. Look at the all trial. I'll have Amlodipine, IDNT, Arvesartan, Renal, Remiprin, UKPTS, APCT, we all understand. And ASK is the last one with Amlodipine. So the recommendation comes from the KDGO that patients who have got without proteinuria, you could be a little liberal in controlling blood pressure up to 140 by 90, but with proteinuria, you have to be 130 by 80. That's the message, final message. No story would be complete without glyphosate because glyphosate has such a pleiotropic effect. Net effect, it improves on the renewed plasma flow. Filtration fraction becomes better. Single nephron GFR becomes better. Intraglomerular pressure is resumed back. Postglomerular arterial resistance becomes better. Preglomerular arterial resistance also improves. post again release, plasma and nitric oxide decreases. Angiotensin 2 improves and aldosterone improves. So all, there are so many action, pleiotropic action of glyphosate. But glyphosate is not the answer for average. That's not the last the drug. And I have a slide, I don't show it, but I have a slide where the glyphosate have showed the potential to decrease HPA1C within the five year, ever since the first glyphosate came, is now coming slowly down. It's getting the same result what we had with the sulfonylurea. There are different stories. But why it is so? Because SGLT inhibitors do not have not yet been established, role on endothelial dysfunction, mitochondrial injury, tubular hypertrophy, and growth factor in autophagy. They have not responded. This is all credence DAPA CKD trial, which have all shown, and they have worked even prescribed even those patients whose EGFR was less than 30 ml, 30 to 60 ml. DAPA CKD between the 25 to 75, so huge range of variation. And MPA kidney, we have still, we are still waiting 2022 20, results might be out. But all the studies we have said, at this particular level, when EGFR is so low, glucose lowering property has nothing to do with it. It is all other property which are helping the kidney. And what are those? With GLPRA, it is the inflammatory cytokine, NFKTB, which goes down. 
sodium hydrogen on exchange and NH3 and ANP improves. The endo uh, renal fibrosis decreases, the photocyte loss improves, mesangial dysfunction improves, endothelial dysfunction improves, and off the deficit disorder improves. This is the molecular area which somebody was referring before the mitochondrial cytopathy and mitochondrial distress. ER stress improves, apoptosis becomes better, slit diagram between the two photocytes becomes better, the fibrosis becomes less. The migration, this is called mesangial transformation between the tight junction becomes better. There's improved autophagy with mTOR based action and fibrosin proliferation. So the combination of GLPRA and glyphosate becomes a better answer for patient. Okay, this already have been talked. Empire Canvas leader all have shown values something like 0.39% to 27% to 22% and ultimately 56% improvement. So the CMAS glutide sustained six and leader, when you add it with any one of the glyphosate, they had the better chances of improving the renal function. This is the randomized trial, again, based on the maintenance on the newer immunosuppressive drugs. The primary glomerulus I was talking, the combination of the calcineurin inhibitors, metrophosphamide, as well as the azoxaprine, they all together with referring at the primary glomerular disease to decrease the incidence. This is the phospholipid A2R antibody, now being used in the <laughs> nephrotic syndrome nephronus nephropathy, last two slides. This is the abatacept in glomerular disease, which is a new era of intelligent immunosuppression, and this is the one which we are looking for. So this is the summary of the presentation. The, uh, the ultimately, what important issue is, doesn't matter what medicine you use, but if you can control meticulous blood pressure by using any simpler drug, you can control blood sugar, bring HbA1c below seven, take care of the primary glomerular disease. For the secondary glomerular disease, we now understand the specific immunosuppressive therapy and the combination of GLPRA with SGLT2 inhibitors would be a long way to solve the disease. Thank you.